Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Film Sprinter. In today's video, we're listing down the top 10 rules that con star sellers must follow. In case you guys don't know, this is the second part of our previous video. If you have not watched that video, then the link is given in the description. Go ahead and check it out. So without any further ado, let's begin. Sign items need to be certified. The Gold and Silver Pond website has a list of rules for all coming sellers. It isn't all that comprehensive, but it also comes with some limited interesting rules that appears to contradict with the things that go on with the show. Well, the rules claim that all signed items needs to come with a letter or certificate of authenticity. This is strange because the Pawn Stars cast have faced more than their fair share of counterfeits in the past few years. Buying only limited edition artwork. This may come as a shock given how much artwork the crew has hanging around the pawn shop, but Gold and Silver claims to only take limited edition art pieces. This means that they won't deal in reprints or anything other than an artist's real work, which is extremely rare. Sure, a reprint of Van Gogh's Story Night can be found anywhere and isn't worth a whole lot, but we can be sure that the original will never see the interior of the gold and silver pawn shop. Not buying antiques This may come as a surprise to most viewers, but the pawn stars don't actually deal in antiques. Well, that's not completely true. They buy and sell small antique knickknacks all the time, but according to their website, they don't buy antique furniture. They claim to lack sufficient space for it, which is understandable. Not buying vinyl records Vinyl may have created a small comeback among those who insist on loving the actual sound of an evil scratch. And this is definitely going to prevent the contents of a garret or basement ending up in their showroom. It is also very true that while records can hold sentimental value, the semi-rare ones aren't going to be valued a lot. Now if the record is signed, this is a completely different story, but it will depend on the seller to verify that the signature is accurate. No collectibles this seems to be another rule that the pawn stars break all the time, but their website makes it clear that they don't deal with Beanie Babies or any other collectible products of that time. This looks a bit strange as things like baseball card collections and other assortments of unique junk appear on the show on a regular basis. No modern firearms this seems like a weird rule, but they outline the weapons which are manufactured after 1898 and cannot be sold in their store. This may look like an extremely weird and difficult circumstance, but Nevada state law actually authorizes what counts as an antique piece of military history and a dangerous firearm. It looks like that the guys behind the desk have skirted the line and bought some risky ex-military stuff. But talking about their strict submissions with the law, it appears that they have never purchased anything that they shouldn't have. Don't mail anything in The gold and silver website makes it clear that they don't permit potential sellers to mail their items for examination purposes. In fact, they only deal with people face to face and almost never make any deals that would require any sort of weight or travel. This rule is basically to guarantee that storms of packages don't arrive at their P.O. box. Interested sellers can get in contact with them if they have any urgent business inquiries, but they can't mail anything or do any real business without stepping inside of the shop. Sellers must supply a physical description of themselves. This sounds like a very bizarre rule and one that might scare up some sellers, but the pawn shop is actually compelled by law to take down the descriptions of the seller along with some of their basic information. This should be a normal process to anyone who has ever had any dealing in the pawn business. However, it's always a little unnerving. They do this because they should have purchased false or stolen goods that can provide the authorities with the descriptions of the offending party. Pawn stars don't deal with customers anymore. This will be a major setback for those who are looking to get their 15 minutes of fame along with a few hundred dollars for their business. In short, the pawn stars are not allowed to deal with regular customers at this point as it would increase the number of unreal offers put in by many people who are wishing to get an opportunity to meet the stars. Sellers make the first offer. This is pretty common practice for most pawn brokers, but at gold and silver, the seller always has to make the first offer. Audience members will notice that Rick always asks someone how much they are looking to get their special item and never proposes a price. This is because they don't want to harm a purchase by suggesting an incorrect number and giving clients illusions of greatness. 
helping the people behind the counter to make the first move is usually problematic in these things. But customers should have come prepared with a rough calculation of what they are looking to get for their thing. Alright, that's it for today. We will see you in our next video. Thanks for watching.